Sasa <laughs> communication between the Treasury and the Parliament was actually submitted under cover of our budget dated uh, 15 August 2022. The above actually flows from the fact that when your committee, uh, Honorable Chair, initially engaged Treasury officials to discuss the Financial Adjustment Bill of 2019, the guidance that was given was for Treasury to arrange for the submission by the relevant ministries of the amended appropriation, appropriation accounts for validation by the Auditor General and that such submissions had to be made through Parliament. And to that end, the Honourable Chair, Treasury engaged the relevant ministries which agreed to embrace expenditures that had not been included in their appropriation account for the respective years and submitted the amended returns to Parliament for oral transmission to the Auditor General. The required amended appropriation accounts were then submitted to Parliament in two batches. 15 undercover of minutes dated 14th April 2021 and a further 11 undercover of our minute of 31 May 2021. The outstanding submission, Honorable Chair, relates to the then Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprises and Cooperative Development and was availed to the Auditor General together with the second batch of submissions made to Parliament, which the former indicated had not been on pass to them. So I, I think within this record, uh, Honorable Chair, we, the, we were submitted through Parliament, we were writing to the clerk so that they would be for on one submission to the Auditor General. So this was actually complied with our Honourable Chair. You are saying what it was then, it was supposed to be submitted through Parliament? That, that was the request. That, that you, you said rather than ask normally would have taken them directly to the Auditor General. <laughs> but you then said you wanted these uh, 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 accounts to be submitted through Parliament. So we would write to Parliament as per these minutes that I have indicated. 
So you are saying you take the responsibility today, the day that the audio general is received. We complied with you, on Honorable Chair, with the request that said to Parliament, but I would want to assume that the Auditor General should then have subsequently received these minutes uh, from, from, from Parliament. Indicating that uh, the information, uh, Honorable Chair, was submitted in two batches uh, on the 14th of April 2021 and as well as on the 31st of May 2021. So, so the information was submitted. And the request from this committee was that you wanted that information submitted to the Auditor General through Parliament. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, if I can just clarify, uh, the, the, the is, uh, there are two issues. Uh, the first issue was uh, the submission of amended appropriation accounts, uh, where the committee indicated they had to pass through Parliament and would then be uh, transmitted to the Auditor General's office uh, for validation. Uh, that is what the uh, PS is referring to. But then in subsequent engagement uh, with, the, with the committee uh, in July, uh, the issue was then why has the validation not been done? And uh, as, as I indicated then, uh, the expectation from our side was that uh, the Auditor General would then uh, go to the individual ministries uh, to carry out the validation. Uh, and the committee then indicated that we as Treasury needed to put the documentation together mm -hmm. 
uh, for all the ministries uh, whose appropriation accounts have been amended and then submit them so that there is the validation process proceeds. Uh, subsequent to that, we then got a list, uh, a <coughs> matrix from the Auditor General's office uh, indicating their requirements uh, to be able to carry out uh, that, that exercise. Uh, this is, Chairman, where the committee had uh, said uh, those documents should be submitted by the 29th. But unfortunately, uh, that has not been possible because uh, we have had to go back and engage the ministries to then compile the documentation that is required. We also have had to uh, engage other stakeholders because at the ministry level, uh, they also then started asking for certain details uh, which we needed to, to put together. So I just wanted to clarify that distinction, Chairman. There is the first issue about uh, submitting amended appropriation accounts, which was done. But then there is the second issue of submitting uh, supporting vouchers to, us, to enable the Auditor General to validate those, those, those amendments. Thank you, Chairman. If, if you get in the question, it's about a time frame. Are you saying these things were so heated that you couldn't get these things in three years? You needed three years to, to, to put these things on. It's about the time frame. So what took you so long? Do you need three years to put together these things that were there? If they were there, if they were there in the first place. Three years. I think that's where we need an answer. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may come in. Uh, I, I, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the, the, if you actually look at the lapse of, of, of time uh, between us now trying to uh, reconcile and the fall of the proper procedures in terms of the, um, of the uh, condemnation bill and putting everything to, to, together. I, I, I think it's just an issue of proper record keeping within government, uh, especially when you look that uh, the, this is seven years later for, for 2015. And in some instances, the personnel that we were relying on to actually retrieve the documents, some of them had actually moved on and were no longer available. And this was also during the same COVID times where most of staff were also not work in the office and working from, from home. So the, there was actually quite a lot of uh, disruptions in just trying to put uh, this paperwork to, together. Some other ministries would actually be either made or disbanded. Um, and uh, we, we actually did face challenges uh, dealing uh, with the other parties involved because it's not everything that was available in Treasury, but dealing with the other parties involved in putting everything together so that we could have the records which we would do confidently say the Auditor General could look at.